Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will learn something about uh, multi-tenant architecture. And in the upcoming videos, I'll be creating a project. Uh, I mean, to say, simple project which will be on the uh, same topic. All right. So let's understand what is multi-tenant means first. So let's take an example of like, let's say Gmail. Like uh, the whenever you try to send a mail, you use your uh, whatever your name at the rate gmail.com, right? Same Gmail is also like at the rate google.com for the Google employees. Everything is same. Website is same. Just that email ID and the domain is the difference. All right. For example, you might have seen a lot of companies also use Google, uh, you know, products. So in that they must be using the Gmail also. But their email IDs won't be like username at the rate gmail.com. Their user IDs or email ID will be like, uh, let's whatever the username at the rate the company name. For example, if the company name is XYZ, then their email ID will look like username at the rate XYZ.com something like that so how it's working same website but you know depending on this you know like a business or you can say scenario it's like behaving differently right that is called multi-tenant or you know tenant, uh, multi-tenant uh, kind of architecture let's take another example let's say you are having amazon.com so if you use this website it will be going to the us website the default one amazon.com if you are very specific to let's say india then you will be typing something called amazon.in and if you let's say if you are like typing amazon fr then that website will be in completely in french france i mean to the french language so i hope you are getting how if you if there are many ways to you know differentiate i mean like for uh, supporting multi-tenant there are you can uh, get to know the information from based on the domain so for example i gave an example of dot in dot com dot fr that is top level domain so based on that change the website will you know behave differently similarly i gave another example of gmail at the rate gmail at the rate google or at the rate xyz dot com so depending on the domain the website will you know behave differently that's all about multi-tenant like if you see at a very high level now let's see how we can implement the same so for this uh, so in the uh, as i already told you like we will be creating a project on that so on that project i mean like i will be using something called identity server which we will be using for the authenticating the user will be using redis cache so that we need not to hit the db again and again when whenever we try to know uh, i mean try to uh, check like what is the you know db information for the particular tenant so for example if you see the screen like there are two users tenant one and they and like let you can have many so let's say tenant n or something like that right their data should be saved in different db and there is one more thing depending on the there are many ways to implement this multi-tenant uh, architecture some some depending on the project also if the project is a small let's say you, there is a possibility you will be carrying one extra column called tenant information in the db and in that same db you will be you know holding the information of all the tenants so that means one db one service something like that but uh, many people used to lose depending on the project if the project is big and obviously it depends on the client so if the client say no no my data should be separate it should not be mixed with other people so in that case what will happen one tenant let's say i told you example of xyz company and then company is saying my company data should be in a separate db or maybe they want to locate some company is very small company let's say only 10 people why they will go for a big uh, db right they will say i just want let's say one gb data space with respect to the website then they will they will say okay they, 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 then what the company who is providing this kind of feature or infra they will create a separate db which is having a capacity of only one gb so they will charge very limited amount of money for that some people like, like it's a big company and they are having let's say uh, their requirement is like uh, you can say 100 gb data so then they will be charging on based on that so that's where this multi-tenant architecture helps so as i already told you let's say if there is a tenant one tenant two tenant three then depending on the tenant a different db will be there so when whenever somebody is onboarding a new tenant they will be creating a separate tenant obviously a db or a directory you want to call it and at the same time they will create a separate database depending on their use case right and now whenever the any transition is happening transition means any kind of operation or anything a user is trying to do from the website the data will be coming or stored in this their specific db so in, in this example if you see there is a one user called tenant one if let's say if we see at a very high level then tenant one db uh, the or, uh, user information or it 
e tenant one data will be going to the db tenant one similarly there is a some tenant let's say tenant n now the user the data with this which is respect to the tenant n will be going to the tenant n db something like that so there is no cross like uh, there is no like mix and match like uh, you are keeping all the data in one db and based on that let's say can you get me the result where tenant id is equal to one or two or something like that no, we are not doing that we are creating a separate db for each tenant now for example let's say um, xyz company is having 10 employees then 10 employees information will be going to xyz db similarly another company their data will be going to their respective db all right so now let's talk about this architecture we'll be having a sim, uh, sim, uh, you can see very simple project where they will be having something called super admins super admins will be having feature called add super admins they can create tenants they can you know add tenant admins or they can create a simple basic you know users in that particular tenant so you it's like a super admin they have more access they can create users in any tenant also similarly will be having something called tenant admin so let's say there are two company company one and company two so if there is an admin in company one then he'll be able to or he she'll be able to add users to company one or they can also create uh, admins also in the same company but that is not allowed like company one's admin cannot add people to company two that is different story because it's completely out you know outside the boundary only super admin has that access if they has if uh, if they have to manage this kind of request also similarly the basic tenant means like whoever is having a basic role doesn't really matter in which tenant they will be able to do perform or do or whatever you know whatever operation they want to do with respect to their bounty means their company if they have access basic information they will be uh, able to do all the stuff so for example let's say with this project will be like user's goal is to create to-do list so that if the basic user is there he or she will be able to create to-do list but that will be visible only to that user okay similarly if the user is doing tenant admin they can just they will also do within the same whatever activities you know basic user is doing but they can just add more people basic people admin people to the same tenant similarly for super admin they can also add basic people or admin people to any kind of tenants depending on the you know exam i mean use case i would say and they on top of that they can create tenants and they can create super admins also so that other people can also manage the same kind of activity all right so these are the features we will be having and we'll be having a client app so mostly we'll be doing all the, the stuff from the postman so that no need to develop ui the i just want to you know just explain you the concept so that you can also do what you want to do all right and we'll be using identity server oh, i already created a video on that so i will be using the all this stuff whatever i've already explained to you so in that what we'll be doing user will be able to create tenant based on that you know and then save whenever whoever is getting authenticated right let's say t1 tenant t1 is going to log in from the client and the then the, obviously we will be checking whether the user is valid or not and once we get to know i mean before that first we need to know that the user belongs to with tenant so that we will be checking by the help of email id let's say the tenant one username is let's say user one at the rate tenant onecom something like that so what will happen then we will go to tenant one db okay and how we will get to know the person who created this tenant one because the tenant has to be created first what if if the tenant is not even there uh, it's not even created then it will just reject the request so what will happen whoever is creating the tenant so somebody might have already created that tenant somebody means like super admin will has to create it so whenever they create a tenant it will go to the super admin kind of tv uh, that tv is like a master tv which will hold tenant information as well as super admin information that's it nothing much so whoever is creating tenant that information will be going and we will be storing connection string also so that we will get you know whenever we are getting getting any request from tenant one or any so what we'll do based on that we will do all kind of information with that db not any other db so that's where the connection string will is going to help and i already told you like let's say depending on scenarios like tenant when you want only one gb of space tenant two requires more gb of this space so that's where you know this is going to help so what will happen now whenever whoever is creating the tenant the data will be saved into tb as well as we will save the same information in the cache 
I mean reddish cache also so that we can also use the same in across the multiple microservices also so no need to hit the TV for the similar kind of information again and again because end up what will happen in the end whenever any operation is happening every time we'll need to check what is the db what is the connection string and we for doing that stuff also we need to hit this master db again and again because that is not a good practice because the data is same no matter what it is it's going to be same so what we'll be doing once the tenant is created we will store this required information to reddish cache reddish cache we will you know deploy into uh, we'll run this stuff in the uh, one of the Docker machine. So what will happen whenever any user is trying to authenticate, we will get to know what is the domain based on that. We will fetch the connection string and we'll check whether the user is there in the TB or not. If it user is there, that means the token will be you know, assigned to that user and then client app can make a you new know, feature request with that token and depending on that they can perform if the user is having a uh, tenant admin kind of loan uh, at claims then they can create new users also otherwise they will just create a, or maintain their to-do list simple thing similarly so for super admin what will happen we will be creating a generic uh, generic domain so obviously we'll get to know that this master db connection string and we will check whether the user is valid or not if the user is valid this client will get to know the token and it will go to gateway gateway will get to know okay it's a super admin then they will allow these many operations like they can create super admin they can create tenant or they can create you know uh, new admins or basic user in a, any kind of tenants depending on the uh, the call http call so that's pretty much about this video and most probably one more thing in this we will be using uh, latest version of dotnet i will i will say like a .NET 5 we will be using for all the application and db is just like we can use any for for the simplicity i will be using mongodb gateway we will be using oscillate gateway and for the client app as i already told you we will be using postman okay and this redis case will be run on one of the uh, docker toolbox somewhere since i am running everything on windows so that's why i'm saying docker toolbox all right that's pretty much about this video thank you very much